Oh, you're canceled. Hello. Oh, hey, Andrew Hillary <clears throat> in the house. How you doing, buddy? Oh, I'm fucking great. Yeah. All right, let me pull you into the scene, and then we're going to get Sick. going here. We were just talking about uh, Dave Chappelle. Uh, oh, fun. Have you heard of him? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, How's my sound? Am I hot? Am I cold? You, you, I, I, I'm, I'm going to check that in just a second here. I'm, I've got like 12 things. Uh, uh, we'll, we'll actually, chat, what do you think about that? What? How do you? How do we feel about a, uh, Andrew's sound? I'm going to pull your video in, too. Um, really stoked to be with you today, buddy. Hell yeah. It's good um, to be back. Yeah. I've, I've been on yeah. the show before, right? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. All right, let me turn off my background music. Let me pull you into the scene. Um, they're asking for a couple more DBs. A couple DBs. Coming up? Uh, coming up. Uh, we could we All could right. fi figure that out. Actually, can I do that? Chat, how does this sound? Uh, I, don't, I don't know what the fuck I'm doing, actually. I'm like, I feel like I'm panicking right now, so just uh, <laughs> <laughs> bear with me. I'm sorry. Um, boom. Jen Burns there. says that it sounds great. Oh, shit, Perfect. that's me. <laughs> Beautiful face. All right, so um, Dan's still louder, but can't uh, but can be, be uh, can be louder. I, oh, can I do this? I just don't want to turn this thing up too much because uh, I have a habit of laughing really loud at my own jokes, and right. it's never <laughs> – I don't want to <laughs> blow people's eardrums. You got three dBs. All right, Um. well – Andrew, what you're seeing on your screen is called a WYSIWYG. What you see is what you get. That's what I'm uh, currently streaming to my uh, my live stream on Twitch. Um, okay. Yeah. And, uh, dude, uh, welcome back to Twitch. You, do you do a lot of Twitch stuff? Are you, are you on Twitch a lot? Do people invite you to Twitch? No, no. Yeah. I listen to a shit ton of podcasts, but I, I don't really mess with anything that's video. It's just... Yeah. I need to. I need something on while I'm doing other things, but if there's video, then I'm just going to sit there and watch the video, so... Um, you listen to a lot of podcasts. Okay, so let's do the uh, the big intro. I want to ask about your podcast, Andrew Hillary. Uh, I want to confirm your your uh, pronouns. He him. Yes. Yeah. Uh, they can find you at uh, at Twitter at Andrew Hillary with one L, U S, all one word. All right, and I'll yeah. put that link in there too in the in the old chit chat. All right, for people to follow you there. You describe yourself as a as a podcaster and reply guy, a podcaster mm -hmm. reply guy. Let's sit. Let's imagine. Andrew, someone doesn't know what a reply guy is. Explain that to a to a five year old. <laughs> uh, well, a reply guy is a guy who replies. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but it's just like <laughs> I mean, it's like a moniker for that people use for uh, mostly women and femme presenting people for just the like random dudes that will like hop into their replies and like try to one up their jokes or try to like make things sexual when they're not meant to be it's so it's like it's a term that is uh what's the opposite of a term of endearment it's like it's like a just a, a thing that people can use to be like these fucking reply guys keep uh you know whatever but i'm like well i kind of am that but also like i don't know i feel like i'm good at it it's it's the same thing with like how in theory like somebody being an incel like like when when incel started, like it was actually started by a woman who was just like trying to make connections with other people that were like trying to have sex but couldn't. Uh, and you know, like it was like it was originally some forum where people were like trying to talk their feelings out through it, and then it very quickly became bastardized and turned into evil. But like it, being a reply guy, if you're ethical about it. <laughs> and you know, and you understand that you're not entitled to anybody liking your replies. Yeah. There's nothing wrong with it. It's just people people use it in a gross way. Um, so there's like a definitely a negative connotation to the term reply guy. Uh, but I get that, you know, <laughs> like you're good at Twitter. I don't think a five year old would know what I meant by that. If I'm being honest, for sure. No, that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> Did we get that chat? If you, it, like, was there anyone that, that didn't get it? That, that are there doesn't any five year olds in the chat? <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, I think it's eighteen and over. But you know, these fucking kids these days, right? Um, mm -hmm. You are good at Twitter, though. You got like, you get like big massive tweets. I see your tweets screen capped, and I see them on Reddit, dude. I think we talked about this before. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Um, yeah, I mean, it's happened a few times. Uh, the thing, if if anybody in the chat is ever wondering about uh, or hoping that to someday have a viral tweet, the thing about it is, is that it re the only thing it does 
is just give you a new addiction that you're going to chase for the rest <laughs> of your life. <laughs> yep. You got to chase that dragon, huh? Um, yeah. Well... So you're still chasing that dragon. You, you're you're uh, you're a good tweeter. I don't know if I want to say prolific. This is one of my new favorite tweets of yours. Did you like Photoshop this yourself? What's this, what is this? If you're against him, I'm against you. In this house, we believe Hank the <laughs> Tank is innocent. A <laughs> cab includes the California Fish and Wildlife Service. Um, uh, that is, I didn't Photoshop it. Okay. I, I don't know. I'm not very good at that kind of thing. I made it in uh, Instagram Story Editor. Nice. <laughs> like, but like it works, you know. Yes. Fucking but, resourceful. Yeah. <laughs> that's yeah, all what's, I, but that's what it's about. Let's go, man. That's memes, yeah. baby. I'm team Hank the Tank, honestly. I was like, I don't know what the what okay, we're wait. supposed to be talking about here today, but I was like, I think oh. I can probably just talk about Hank for the entire hour or whatever. <laughs> like All right, so hold on. Hank the Tank. I, I think I'm only vaguely aware of this. Is this like a bear that's like loose or some shit like that? Or is it just a big fat bear? What is going on? I don't I have no idea what's what Hank the Tank. What am I what well, am I looking at? <laughs> I'm glad you asked. Uh, Hank, the Hank the Tank is a he is a five hundred pound bear uh that lives in the woods around South Lake Tahoe yeah. in Northern California. And in the last couple months, for some reason he has like completely lost all fear of humans oh, that's so right, I read. he he just like started going into people's houses and trying to get food and stuff yeah. and he hasn't hurt anybody yet yeah like you know it's possible he might obviously bears are dangerous yeah. or can be dangerous but like he's just like go like opening people's doors and like eating their picnic baskets basically and like the california fish and wildlife service is like we must execute this bear no like, yeah, they want to kill it. And no, it's I, I have a big problem with this. I Same. feel like, you know, most of the time, whenever there's an animal threatening people, it's the people's fault and the people should deal with the consequences. Like there was a story maybe like two months ago where some guy at a zoo put his hand inside uh, inside the tiger's cage. He was like a janitor. So, like, this wasn't just some guy. This was like a guy who in theory knows how zoos work yeah. and like is around animals. So he put his hand in the tiger's cage and the tiger like bit down on his hand and the guy, like the tiger wouldn't let it go. And so the police came and shot the tiger in the head and killed it. And it's like, man, I understand for that guy, you know, it's sad, but you deserve to lose your hand more than the tiger deserved to die. Yeah. In my opinion, you fucked around. You're going to find out. out. Yeah. Um, hold on. We're being told you're doing disinformation. Is this? Come on, don't fuck what? with me. With I got a guest here. <laughs> I've got a guest. They say you're. Why do you refuse to trust the science? What science? I got a guest here. Don't embarrass me. <laughs> what are you doing here? My gosh, chat, calm down. You're bear. I look silly. Uh, are I'm, we talking I'm about actually like really bear right science now. <laughs> or is this unrelated? Um, yeah, I'm actually curious what you're talking about. What science? Um they say someone says that the bear is gonna is gonna be put into a sanctuary or it's gonna kill someone. Is well, this true? They said the the article that I saw last yeah. week said that their plan is like they want to trap it, but they're like They've authorized deadly force, and so now, like, a bunch of groups are like, hey, like, don't kill this bear. So there's, like, an ongoing conversation about it, but, like, this is on the table to kill the bear. Um, oh. I don't know if they're definitely going to do it or not, but I hope they don't. And, uh, like, bears live in the woods, so if you build houses in the woods, uh, the, you build, the, you you live in the bear's house. Like, sorry. Yeah, there's that. Uh, chat says that this uh, this bear, upon relocation, will just actively seek out human habita habitation because uh, they just associate it with a quick snack, quick food. Well, fucking well so what? That's our fault? Tell the bear to move into my neighborhood. I will feed him every day. I don't know how much a 500-pound bear eats, but, like, I think there's plenty of people that will be like, yeah, this is our neighborhood bear. Yeah, like, you're stuck with it. Yeah, I mean, there's people that have said, like, put them in an animal sanctuary or whatnot, and, like, I don't know. Uh, you want to... So the, the best option for the fact that this bear has become accustomed to getting food out of people's houses is 
we have to kill the bear. Like, no. no. Hank did nothing wrong. Hank did nothing wrong. This is what we should start with. We should start with that, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. If you want to talk about, um, <laughs> uh, I don't know. I'm I'm not a fan of of uh, killing animals for doing animal things. Yeah, right. They're just chilling, man. They're just vibing, and we're gonna start shooting them. That ain't right, man. That's not right. Um, I'm glad you brought this to my attention, um, because I'm on. T I guess I'm Team Hank now. Mm -hmm. Hank the Tank, huh? Hell yeah! What a name. It's a cu cute name. He's a cutie pie. Can we can we take He's a peek? So fat. That's He's like the fattest so bear I've ever seen. Fucking <laughs> fat. That is 100 percent true. Look at this fat bear, everybody. <laughs> South Lake Tahoe, California residents called the police more than 100 times since July about a black bear known as Hank the Tank. <laughs> he looks like if you blew up a sleeping bag like a balloon. <laughs> Here's the thing. Here's the thing. They can't kill him because they already gave him a name. Yeah. You, once you name it, you're sort of stuck with it. Give it a uh, name. <laughs> get the, yeah. Peak. This, this is peak bear evolution. This is not his final form. Let's keep this in mind. Mm -hmm. All right, Hank. The I get accused tank. of doing misinformation a lot, or yeah. just sometimes, I guess. But yeah, they can get <laughs> a lot, The most recent time is because I was looking. There was some thread about like police violence, and there was a chart in the thread, like in the replies. Yeah. It, it was like the leading causes of police death, and one of them on the chart was uh, autoerotic asphyxiation <laughs> killed five police officers last year. And I was like what? looking at it, and like everything else seemed legit, like car crashes, COVID, like blah blah blah. But there's just that one, and I'm like, there's no way that, like, even if some cops died from that, like they wouldn't tell us. Like this is, like this isn't what? real. <laughs> what but is I was that? like, this is so fucking funny that I don't care if it's real or not. Yeah, I don't so, care sometimes. I shared it, and I yeah. was like, five cops died from autoerotic asphyxiation last year, and I feel like not enough people are talking about it because. <laughs> Again, I'm I'm fun. Like <laughs> there was like hundreds of replies, people being like, "It's fucked up for you to say this kind yeah. of thing." And I like after like a few people like replied like this isn't true. I <laughs> I replied to my own tweet and I was like, "I don't care if this is true. Yeah, it's I one think of those this things. is funny." Um, <laughs> also, he, listen to my podcast if you want some more uh, poorly researched information. Exactly. And. Uh, People got really mad, and that just made it even more funny to me. <laughs> like, Dude, cops should be owned like that. I mean, that's the kind of shit that's just funny, and I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna believe it. And you can't correct me. There's no way mm -hmm. you could send me a link. I'm not reading it. It's like that dude <laughs> at the at J6 tased himself in the balls and died. You know what I mean? Yeah. You can't convince me yeah. that didn't happen. I don't give a shit, yeah. man. That happened. I'm trying to find your tweet so I can show it, but that's just such a funny fucking thing. Um, yeah. It was a it was a good time, yeah. I I I, I had to mute it eventually because people were just wilding out. But yeah, all kind of people call me stupid, and I'm like, I'm not <laughs> arguing with that at all. Like, <laughs> yeah. stupid people can still be funny, dude. Chill. <laughs> Andrew, um, tell us about your podcast. So I host a show called The Worst Week Yet. I do mm -hmm. about as good of a job researching it as I do my tweets. Um, we just like, I don't know, me and my friend Deanna, we go through the the headlines of the last week and just try and figure shit out, try and make, uh, we try to use humor to navigate the trauma of mm. being a, alive and aware of what's going on in the world. Yeah. I so, mean, yeah. yeah, we just tell jokes about how fucked everything is, mostly. It's a good time. Um, yeah, that's definitely the vibe we got here, yeah. We, we came up with a new tagline. Actually, Deanna, my co-host, came yeah. up with a new tagline. We're uh, lefty besties with good hearts and bad takes. Lefty besties with good hearts and bad takes. That's adorable. I really like mm -hmm. that. Andrew, is it okay if I ask, what happened to Maria? Uh, you just can pass. some personal yeah. behind-the-scenes stuff. Yeah. It just wasn't a good fit. Um, yeah. She was great on the show. She's, you know, obviously she does amazing work uh, doing social work. But, yeah, mm -hmm. just like... I was taking it, trying to take the show in a direction where I wanted to like make this what I do, and uh, uh, yeah. so you have to like start monetizing, start doing all that yeah. shit, and it just it just like led to a rift. But yeah, for sure, uh, different, uh, just different directions. Yeah, all right. Yeah, um, I was just curious. Someone asked in chat as well, and uh, I was I was wondering. 
So uh, you got the worst week yet. Uh, last time you were on, we talked about how you drive uh, the ice cream truck. Um, yeah. I'm sure that's not popping during the, the winter here. No, no, people are like, you should sell hot chocolate out of the ice cream truck. Oh. And I'm like, there isn't a working heater in the ice oh. cream truck. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, you'd have to be it's retro. Like, yeah, it's a different thing. It's for a different t- time of year, everyone. Yeah, well, it's just the truck there. itself is like a 1987 conversion van that like is <laughs> yeah. mostly held together with duct tape. Like <laughs> this, even like it, it literally doesn't have heat. So like yeah. even whenever it's like the you know end of fall, whenever it's like warm enough during the day, but it gets down in the 50s at night, I'm like wearing a full winter coat, shivering whenever I'm driving back to the to the depot. So yeah, over the winter, I've just been mostly sitting around. <laughs> yeah. Started getting back out and doing comedy the last month or so. Okay, okay. I, I I'd been like hiding away with Omicron going nuts, but yeah, the problem is is that. I'm like a really extroverted person. Mm. And when I'm sitting in my house by myself seven days a week, start to get a little crazy. So, yeah, yeah, I was I was in a bad place, but started going out and writing some new jokes. I got I got I've been trying so hard to write anti-capitalist jokes, (laughs) but it's like it's like this fucking like such a delicate balance like you don't want to be preachy or i don't want to be preachy like there's comedians that'll go up and they get this reaction called clapter which is where the crowd reacts and like people clap but like they're not it's not funny it's like it's like yeah yeah like i don't want that I'm, i'm not trying to get into that like lane or whatever it's not it doesn't interest me i want to go up and and be goofy and silly but i'm figured out like, oh, maybe if I can just, th- it's just thread in the needle, you know? Yeah. I, um, and I feel also, the same. Yeah, go for, go for it. I'm sorry. Also, I'm in Pittsburgh. So, like, yeah. making fun of capitalism in a, like, pretty relatively conservative city, that needle, that thread of that needle is even smaller. <laughs> oh, for sure. Um, So you're like... I can't imagine like sitting down to actually write jokes that that actually boggles my mind because um, I, I I would like to say I sort of do comedy over here. I'm not I'm, I'm mm-hmm. I've never I've never written a joke in my life. I'm just like riffing and we're just just doing dumb silly shit, you know, um, yeah. writing a joke, though, I've, it's just stunning. It's like it's clearly a skill set. You could see when people are better and worse at it. I had um I had Jake Flores on uh uh, a couple weeks ago, we were talking about uh, Joe Rogan and everything, and the whole mm-hmm. the whole fucking thing. And uh, maybe we, you, you can let me know if, what you think about that, if you care. Um, I basically think yeah. the most of the same things that Jake thinks, except he's uh, way smarter than me, so he can yeah, say them same. better. <laughs> like whenever I listen to Jake's podcast, I'm like, yeah, that is how I would say that if I wasn't a fucking idiot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Jake's totally. cool as hell. Jake's Jake's a really cool guy. I was like, um. I, I was like, Jake, you know what would be great? If you and Eve Six Guy did a podcast. <laughs> and he's like, actually, yeah, we were talking about that. I was like, oh. I'm ah. like, maybe we can get something going here. Um, so It'll be fan tough. Of- Eve Six Guy only has a phone. I know, Whenever he man. Came on my pod- he yep. came on my podcast like a year ago, and he's like <laughs> sitting in his backyard on his <laughs> iPhone. Like, d- <laughs> we can hear planes flying overhead and shit. I'm I like- love it. Yeah. I love that bit. That's one of my favorite things, Eve Six guy. Um, okay, so you're doing the you're doing the the comedy. You you you, you sit down. You write comedy. Um, tell us like what that's like. Uh, how did you get into that? Do you have like favorite comedians that you look up, looked up to that maybe uh, you look up as models? Like uh, when when while you're writing, uh, like how do you how does one fucking do that? You just like start thinking about things. I don't get it. <laughs> well, I will say that most of the comedians I know what they'll do is they'll sit down and they'll write out a joke and like, you know, write it out word for word, pen and paper. Uh, that is actually not what I do at all. Yeah. Um, I cannot for the life of me, write Like that, like what my process is like, I'll have an idea for something that I want to make fun of. Yeah. And then it'll just like be parked in my brain for a couple days or weeks. And then like, just at some point I'll just think of like, the punchline or like Uh. just like the twist that turns it from just a funny thought into a joke. But like, there's still a lot of meat left. Um, 
so I take that and I just go on stage and just talk it out, like kind of riff it until I find how the best way to say it is, um, which most most of my friends that are comedians, they don't do that. They they like like to go up with like a solid plan. Um, I've always said, like, I'm not a very good joke writer, but I'm like a very good talker, like especially in public. So, like, I have no fear to go up on stage and talk um, and just tell wildly embarrassing truths about myself uh into a microphone <laughs> so like <laughs> yeah so my process is like kind of just like i have an idea and then i try it until it either works or i give up and move on all right um in chat the uh, we we're, we're having someone ask uh, uh about your favorite uh, stand up comedian as a kid um uh who who did you listen to um, I didn't like, I mean, I watched like Comedy Central whenever they had specials on. Like, I didn't like, I was never really, really into stand up that much. Like, my whole thing was I like making people laugh a lot yeah. because I'm very insecure and had like a lot of like childhood trauma where my feelings were invalidated. So I'm like, if I can make the people around me react in a positive way, that'll reaffirm that I have value. I'm fucked in the head. Uh, <laughs> So, like, I'm not, like, I don't re I love watching comedy in person. I've watched l or listened to, like, stand-up album specials, like, maybe one or two a year. I don't, it's not that interesting to me um, not to be there. I, I love it in person because you okay. feel, like, the energy going okay. back and forth. But, yeah. Um, I don't know, like, just, like, I liked Dane Cook a lot, like, whenever I was it's 12 okay. or whatever. Yeah. Like, just yeah. like the the people who would have like that half hour Comedy Central specials, I, I don't even remember really. Um, but like, I don't listen to, I don't listen to anybody now. I haven't listened to a stand up comedy album since 2019. Uh, whenever one of my favorite current comedians, his name is Dave Ross. He put out an album called "The Only Man Who Has Ever Had Sex." It's a pretty, <laughs> it's a pretty great album. Uh, <laughs> But that's the last time I listened to any comedy. The only man who's ever had sex. Let me see if I can just uh, give people a peek at this real quick. It's really funny. Have, There's uh, a story about gas station chicken that blew my fucking dick off, dude. Oh, can, can you, this has got a little uh, two-minute thing. Do you mind if I play it uh, for the for no, chat? Not at all. You can hear that? Is this just the intro? I hope they say something. If it's just clapping, I'm going to cry. <laughs> oh, oh. Do you have a name for your audience? Uh, 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 like, um, uh, uh, Jake was telling us, uh, his, he, 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 like, calls his audience, you know, what the fuckers or something like that. Uh, <laughs> um, I, 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 like, no. But yeah. sometimes I'll call them, uh, the worst week yetters. Yeah, yeah. That's like, uh, we had like a running bit where we called our audience the menthol mafia. <laughs> that came from like an inside joke whenever, jo uh, whenever some Trump or Biden, somebody wanted to ban menthol cigarettes. I don't remember. Oh, um, that's right. And, but like, I don't know. It's, that's right. It, it was just like a joke Marie and I went back yeah. and forth with for like a couple weeks and we were using that, but it hasn't really come up lately. So I don't fucking know. And right, let's, let's, uh, let's, no, I just, Anybody that is a fan of my podcast, I I fucking just worship them. I don't I don't have a name for them. I just yeah. praise them. Like <laughs> I get so stoked whenever anybody pays attention to me. Again, I'm fucked in the head. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Love it. All right, let me let me play the rest of this intro. Maybe uh, Dave's gonna tell a joke for us. Oh, there's a track button too. If we don't get anything, I'll I'll hit that. How about this? Do you have a, like a favorite bit from this that that, that sticks out? 
uh, I might be able to play my along. favorite one is the gas station chicken one but i don't know okay uh <laughs> i don't yeah i don't see i don't know what the title is all right let me try um i scream at chicken per chance that's children but no, children fine. i'm fucking not good at reading <laughs> it's incredible uh dude's posting their l's am i right yeah so right. it's gas station gas station chicken yeah all right let's see if we can pull this up real quick if not i'm gonna bail on this buying a bucket of gas station chicken dave ross here we go all right four I'm minutes i say a thing to you and i mean it no one ever believes me that i mean this but i mean this you all need to go to florida more I'm serious. In Florida, people Florida say man. shit to you like, you gotta try the chicken at this gas station. It is an incredible place. So I was in Florida, I was eating dinner at a gas station. <laughs> it goes right to it. Because a guy said to me, you gotta try the chicken at this gas station, and I believed him, because that's not a thing you say when you wanna be friends. <laughs> I went into the gas station, the fried chicken had its own counter in the back. I went up to the counter and I said, I'll have the eight pieces, please. Because eight pieces of fried chicken was $3. Yep. And the guy just fires right back. You want 16 pieces? It's $4. Yep. And I was like, fucking yeah, man. Yeah. I was born in America. Yes. <laughs> Is 32 $5? Is yeah. 64 <laughs> free for some reason? <laughs> yeah, let's fucking do this, man. So I agree to his 25 cent pieces of chicken. <laughs> and then he asked me this question that I will never forget for the rest of my life. He goes, you want wings or big chicken? What? <laughs> what are you what talking you think about? think about this? What are you talking about? I've ordered chicken so many times. I don't pick that. You pick that. It comes in all <laughs> kinds of shapes. I pick what? Also, those are such extremes. You want juice frosting or more cake? What? <laughs> I don't know. Both? I mean, I went with big chicken. <laughs> yeah, I'm curious. He's going to give me 16 whole chickens for $4. <laughs> so he hands me this tray of uh, admittedly big <laughs> pieces of chicken. <laughs> they were large. Admittedly. He was right. And I was stoned. So I was so happy. I don't know how long it took me to order these things uh, because my friends were gone. So I'm alone and I am stoned. And I have so much chicken. I am so happy. And I start walking out of the gas station just singing to myself, chicken, 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 chicken. <laughs> so happy. And then my happiness was taken away by the introduction of a character that we will call Tweaker. Um, this guy just jumped and, ch oh my God, he came out of nowhere. He just popped out of the bushes, but there were no bushes. What is it about people <laughs> on meth? Every single person I have ever met who was on meth wasn't there, and then they were there. <laughs> Every single person. Is poof into existence. This guy jumps right in front of me and goes, give me your chicken. Dude, I fucking hate confidence in adults. <laughs> I cannot stand it. How did you get this way? You know what I'm talking about. It's a funny little joke. It like, it's like, you know, not really per anything to do with a story. You know, it's not like important in the story, but it's just like clearly something he's thought of and he just threaded in there. <laughs> Very funny bit. I like that a lot. People that just go through their life like, yeah, what's up? I'm fine. I got enough money. I don't question my friendships. Fuck you. <laughs> Everything's fine. Go to hell. That's what this guy was like. Give me your chicken. So confident. I literally, it took me 10 seconds to realize I didn't have to give it to him. I thought I had to. I was just like, what is, is there some weird leaving the building tax? Is that why there's so many pieces for so little money? You're going to lose 75% of your chicken to yeah. Bill in the front there. <laughs> so buy 16 because you are getting four. Four pieces. Big chicken. And, you know, I got picked on in high school. So I was like, oh, be brave, Dave. <laughs> you never stood up for yourself. Stand up for yourself now. <laughs> this guy, your chicken. You used to try to be friends with the bullies. Don't do it. So this guy goes, give me your chicken. I looked him dead in his face and said, fuck no. <laughs> and then he goes, uh, I'm sorry, sir. Wow. And walked away. And I felt so victorious yeah. about that. Oh, my God. I really felt like I overcame something. I was just like, fuck yeah, dude. And finally, you are strong now. Yes. I really felt so powerful. Anyway, that's the story of the time I refused to give food to a hungry person, then threw 13 pieces of chicken in the trash. 
Yeah. <laughs> you just threw the rest. High school just never stops coming at you. You know what I mean? <laughs> Not bad. Cool. Do you, do, do you feel like your stand-up uh, similar to that? Uh, sort of similar uh, storytelling style? No, uh, right. the the way that he interjects, like yelling a lot, I think that's something that I kind of do. Okay. Uh, but that's again, like, I'm not I'm not writing very good jokes. What I'm doing is like I bring a lot of energy and character onto stage, and so like I can go from like something that's like real soft and delicate to like ah! like very quickly, and I can sell the shit out of a mediocre joke, uh, <laughs> and. I feel like, honestly, at least at my level, like it, it, sometimes that's like better than somebody that has like a really well written joke but can't talk. Like, mm. there's there's a lot of people that are like brilliant writers and they come to open mics and they just like kind of mumble and don't look at anybody. And there's, it's like you can't perform. I mean, yeah, it just doesn't do as good. What you got over there? Me? You got some chicken? Yo. What are you looking at? <laughs> I'm 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 looking yeah I'm looking for some chicken off screen. I honestly I am getting hungry. This chicken story. Um, yeah. I, I do. Uh, I, I, uh, I'm not sure if I mentioned. I do have a hard uh, stop at at, uh, at the top of the hour. I'm pulling up. Okay. I'm pulling something up here, and um, this is I guess a a a, a shift in uh, in topic here. But I'm wondering what if, if you've ever been canceled. What do you think about cancel culture? Uh, I have been canceled actually. You've been, yeah. What do you mean by that? Uh, ironically, it was over chicken. <laughs> what? In a way. Uh, <laughs> Is it so the bit that you, you made, got on, on Twitter I, where you, 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 you like inhale the, the chicken wings? No, no, no. Uh, I, I, I'm a sucker for a pun. And so if I think of a pun or like a dad joke, no matter how cringe or stupid it is, like as soon as it enters my brain, <laughs> I'm like, I'm tweeting this. Do it. So one day I was sitting there and I was watching some weird movie where they were like in outer space in the desert and there were buffalo in the desert for some. I don't fucking know. But there was a buffalo on my TV and I said, oh, here's a pun. Um, people don't actually realize the buffalo went extinct because they kept getting hunted for their wild wings. <laughs> Fired off that tweet. I was like, this is a Andrew. You are a brilliant fucking poster. You un, unmatched, unparalleled Buffalo Wild Wings. Are you fucking kidding me? Um, so <laughs> the next day, I think it was the next morning, somebody replied to it with this article yeah. about how the buffalo in North America were like hunted to extinction yeah. by white european colonizers i could see this all going down in my head this is amazing go on and the, the thing <laughs> is is that i knew that like yeah. i'm not trying to do like buffalo genocide denial i'm just making a wordplay so like somebody replied with like links to articles and i was just like i know this is a joke about wings like i was <laughs> short with them and that's I think that's where I <laughs> fucked up. But I think it's also where they fucked up, because unbeknownst to me, what had happened is that an indigenous girl saw this tweet and yeah. was like upset by it. And so people came in to correct me uh -uh. and then saw me being short. And it's like, here's the thing. I understand that as a comedian, yep. your job is to make people feel good. So sometimes if your joke makes somebody feel bad, that's not the person who feels bad bad it's not their fault it's your fault it was my fault that that girl was upset um i you know i went for something that went into a, a territory that like was not comfortable for people if somebody had just said hey dude your joke hurt somebody's feelings i would have immediately eaten dick and apologized like i'm so sorry like that is not what i meant to do um and i understand that intention doesn't matter it's you know, it, your intention doesn't matter whenever you are talking about something that actually affects somebody else. Like, I understand all that. I would have immediately owned it and apologized and, you know, tried to, you know, just make amends or whatever. But the fact that people came in, like, trying to educate me, it's like, no, no, no. I knew all that stuff. Yeah, yeah. I just, like, for the purpose of making a pun about Buffalo Wild Wings, I didn't <laughs> think that it was something that would, you know, go far enough in that direction where it would hurt somebody's feelings. Obviously, I was wrong. And, you know, I'm not I'm not below or above owning the fact that I fucked up. Sure. Uh, I do it frequently. And it, frankly, everybody does. Yeah. And 
as a comedian, you should have humility to understand that it doesn't fucking matter what you meant. It's how it affects people that matters. Um, so, yeah, like uh, pe- people were like, this guy's doing genocide denial. Everybody needs to unfollow Andrew Hillary. Um, somebody said this is like the 10th racist thing this guy's done in the last two weeks. And I was wow. like, what are the other fucking nine? What are you talking about? Like, Jeez. Um. But yeah, so that felt pretty bad. Uh, <laughs> but again, like, I just, once I found out that I'd hurt somebody's feelings, I deleted the tweet and said, like, hey, I'm sorry uh, that I, that I, uh, you know, made a joke that was, that made people feel bad. I didn't, I don't want to do that. So I'm sorry. Um, so it like kind of, it kind of faded away uh, within like a day or two. But I see, like, in the moment, I kind of understood where people are coming from whenever they go on these like martyr victim complex, like I'm being unfairly persecuted. Like I got that feeling, but like, I'm just, I guess like for lack of a better, like less, uh, for lack of a more humble way to say this, like, I guess I'm just a more decent person to understand that. Like I wasn't the victim at any time. Yeah. Like people, People might have been unfairly mad, but like mm. I still did the original thing that hurt somebody's feelings. Yeah. So I'm not the fucking victim. Like, yeah. All right. So this, um, like I mentioned, I had uh, I had Jake on the the other week. Mm-hmm. Really, really, uh, we I think we talked a little bit about this. He, he had a very similar sentiment. Um, and I'm I'm just I'm just going to go ahead and pat myself on the back for in, inviting two really thoughtful uh, comedians. Uh, uh, and I, I really appreciate you uh, and that take. That was just uh, off the charts, really good. Um, and, and I like how, you, how you, you've you illustrated, you know, it, it, we, we can look at someone like Joe Rogan, if I could just take a really simple example of him just being thirsty to say the N-word, right? He's yeah. like fucking desperate to say the N-word. He thinks he's the victim in the N-word discourse. Yeah. Right? So like, yeah. Um, uh, yeah. So I, I like how you're clearly not the victim in the, in the discourse of, you know, of comedy, uh, which is, you know, very much a lot of the times we're joking around, we're making jokes. Part of it is like, Ooh, Ooh, I'm towing the line. Is this a little, it's a little funny, right? It's a little funny. Oh, and then some, sometimes you're like, Oh shit, I did go too far. I did go too far. Some people don't, yeah. some, some people, they get off on the, Oh, I'm pushing, I'm, I'm going past, I'm, I'm, I'm pushing boundaries. I'm pushing boundaries, but they never go. Oh, okay. Did I go too far? Like, because that's the thing. Like, sometimes you're going to go too far. Um, yeah, and I think that, like, I think a lot of comedians uh, are just completely dishonest with th- themselves and other people about, like, how comedy works. Because, like, shit that was funny a generation ago isn't funny anymore. Like, Dan even, <laughs> even like, stuff that's not, like, oh, it's offensive. Like, just, like, jo- some jokes in general just like humor changes people's tastes yeah. change and like in the 80s every movie uh had like a sexual assault scene where the guy was still the hero of the movie and it's mm. like you understand like why some of that stuff like in the 50s the joke was i punched my wife every day Weird. it's like you get why that's not a joke that anybody wants to make anymore Weird, like yeah you do understand that some some things just aren't funny anymore like what you need to understand is that that process doesn't stop when you start doing comedy, that, that process keeps going. So you have to either keep up or just accept that people are going to be mad. Yeah. And, uh, you know, all these guys, they say freedom of speech. Uh, they are by saying freedom of speech. They are trying to tell people not to talk about them is fucking crazy. Wow. <laughs> like, yeah. Um, I should have freedom of speech. Should the people that are calling you racist not have freedom of speech? Like, wh- wh- what are you talking about? Exactly. It cuts both ways, right? Mm-hmm. Um, oh, I had a thought. Um, uh, Andrew, um, we got about 20 minutes here. I'm sorry why I'm saying that out loud. Uh, oh, the thought was, actually, there's two different things I want to tell you about. One, one thing, I just got to get this out of the way. And then the next thing I want to ask is like about uh, comedians uh, who, who's, whose comedy does hold up. But let's talk about this, this first. Um, I don't know if you heard about this. This was reported uh, about uh, five days ago on the 18th. Mm -hmm. Uh, Netflix announces four new specials hosted and produced by Dave Chappelle. So he's going to have like, he's going to host a series of four 
specials I guess he's going to host, and then he's going to handpick comics. Mm-hmm. All right, have you heard about this? Um, I I mean, I saw like the article when it came out, and I yeah. just kind of like rolled my eyes so hard that I yeah. think I had a stroke and forgot it happened. Uh, <laughs> yeah, what's your take on that? What do you think? <sighs> Netflix makes a lot of fucking money off Dave Chappelle. Uh, yeah. And like the problem with wanting to be like, I don't like using the term woke, but like just to like really reduce a lot of that. Like the problem with trying to do woke comedy is that, frankly, the majority of people in racist ass America don't care. Like they don't care if I could go to Pittsburgh and do a bunch of slurs on stage and I would get booked all over the city. People like that kind of humor. People like that Dave Chappelle is making fun of trans people. Not everybody, but like that sells. And so I get it. Like Netflix, I don't think anybody, I don't think Netflix lost any business because of the Dave Chappelle shitty specials. Um, Yeah. And so like Netflix, uh, big companies, they do whatever makes them the most money. They don't care what's right or wrong. Like all this, all the conservatives that got mad whenever uh, like Adidas would tweet Black Lives Matter. Adidas does not fucking care about black people. They just wanted to be like, oh, we've done market research that says that uh, that tweeting out this progressive hashtag will uh, sell us more shoes in the next quarter. Like that. that's it. That's all that matters to them. Netflix does not care what Dave Chappelle does. Uh, and they care about like making sure their employees don't unionize and shit. Like that's what's that's what they want to yeah. stop. They with Dave Chappelle, they're like, yeah, this guy, we write him a check and then people talk about Netflix for a month. Like it's uh, I hate it, but it's smart business, I guess, you know. Um, I guess I, guess I didn't see this before, but I I guess I can uh, bring this up here and, and see if you know any of these people. Um, it's going to showcase Donnell Rawlings, comedian appeared on the Comedy Central sketch series Chappelle show. Yeah. Um, okay. I guess I don't recognize him. He's, yeah. um, he was on the Chappelle show a sure. bunch. He's like his shorter friend that was bald. Oh, okay. I can't uh, remember any of the characters. I haven't, it's been a while since I saw. Let's see Chappelle who else. Show. I guess that's, that's all it mentions. That's the only name it mentions. The yeah. First comedian featured, uh, well, it oh, will be earthquake, earthquake, the first comedian featured on Chappelle's home team. Chappelle's home team. What do you think about that? <sighs> I don't know. It's, I know, right? Th- there's a lot of stuff. Uh, I will say that uh, I love doing comedy. Yeah. Like, I love getting up on stage, having people's, you know, a chance to get positive reinforcement from people. I love succeeding in comedy, making an audience laugh, especially when it's something that's like deeply embarrassing and personal. That is like, if I wasn't doing comedy would probably be eating me up inside. Like I love doing comedy, but everything else about the industry of comedy is fucking terrible. Like literally to get anywhere, you have to just sell your soul. You have to be a scab. You have to like fuck over all your, peers and co-workers or what have you comedy is a terrible terrible industry um but i mean i guess most of them probably are it's just that like this is the thing that i like doing more than anything else so uh i can't stop <laughs> oh i get it now he's the guy who said i'm rich bitch all right yeah 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 all right i get it now i just think and then, and then, and then, I don't know. Did you catch the thing with the Chappelle and his whole housing thing? Did you have a take on that? Yeah, I mean, it's that's a rich guy trying to uh, keep poor people away from him, and like, there's a million. You know, his team put out a statement to try and spin it, and you know, the, it sounds like somewhat complicated. I might be, I might not have the best reading of it, but like at the end of the day, like, if you're getting up there and saying like, "I'll take my money elsewhere," like you're. I don't think you're a good person. <laughs> like, I don't think you're like, he wasn't doing that to protect people. Like, mm-hmm. I don't know. It's, it's, it, it's just, it's frustrating. Cause like, sure. like I said, there's, there's nothing that anybody can do to stop Dave Chappelle from doing what he's going to do. He just keeps getting rewarded for being a terrible person. And there's, there's, there's nothing I can do to stop. It. Like, I feel like I, I, I would have a better chance of getting elected to Congress than getting Dave Chappelle taken off Netflix. Like, yep. 
<laughs> it's just it's it feels very hopeless. But um, I also like it's not something that uh, I'm that motivated to do anything about just because like I know how the industry of comedy I somehow somewhat know how it works. Like mm-hmm. once you get to the top, you are untouchable. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Like even if you're uh, admitting to sexually assaulting someone with, you just take a year off and then you're back headlining clubs. Like, mm-hmm. yeah. Um, I, I would say that's, uh, that, that's a, a relatively accurate take uh, on, on like what he did and just being someone who actually did really fucking dig into all those details and whatever. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, uh, just, just to add a tiny bit more nuance to that, uh, he like, you know, he leveraged his capital right in his town to yeah. make it harder for a bunch of people to live in his town, uh, specifically uh, because of what they did. They were choosing between two different things. One plan mm-hmm. was the plan that developer came to the t- to the town with cookie cutter hundred of uh, what was it, 141 homes, right? Pretty much all mm-hmm. the same. Uh, and then the other plan was the city going, mm, let's try to inject our values. And that was called the, P- the PUD plan, the pr- planned uh, unit development, whatever. Um, and that had a mix of, uh, um, you know, uh, duplexes, uh, not just single family homes, but duplexes and townhomes uh, starting a little bit cheaper also included a plan to set aside a little bit of land for the this the city to later develop for affordable housing up to 30 units of affordable housing right oh my goodness so because of dave chappelle they went with the developer's plan right dave chappelle mm-hmm. also a developer leveraging his development to shill for another developer and people are like tr- like i'm online like trying to go trying to just literally trying to figure it out and going back and forth with some people on twitter and then they're like, they're like, you're you're shilling for a developer. I'm like, actually, Dave Chappelle's a developer, and he fought for the develop the housing developers' plan. So I don't know. It's it's also one of these things where it's like still developing, like fucking Ukraine and Washington, uh, Russia, and everything. Right? We 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 don't know all the facts yet. Um, so we could learn more about it, and it could actually come out that he's really fighting hard for affordable housing. We don't really know that behind the scenes, but from where we're sitting, this looks really bad and everyone fighting for him is not helping. Uh, so that's, yeah. that's just my little bit of nuance there. I yeah. think that's also Fuck one Dave of Chappelle. the, uh, that's also one of the most dis- like disheartening things about comedy is that, uh, literally any person that just thinks that a comedian is funny yeah. that like looks up to them will defend them to the death. It's weird. Like, like yeah, like whenever the Louis C.K. thing happened, I oh. tweeted I tweeted something about like fuck Louis C.K. Yeah. Or, no, I didn't even tweet it. I was still using Facebook regularly. I just said fuck Louis C.K. Uh-oh. It got like four hundred fucking replies because wow. people were just losing their mind trying yeah. to defend this guy. And I'm like, like you, you I mean, we, what is that? Why? Why do people do that? I'm not telling anybody not to listen to him. I'm just saying fuck him. Yeah, and it's like. You can already separate art from artist. Like, pe- lots of people do that. It's fine. Like, you don't have to. It feels like. It almost feels like people have to justify the fact that they like this person by saying that they're a good person. And it's like, dude, no. Like, I mean, you. There's. Everybody has musicians that they like that are rapists or whatever. And it's like, yeah, eventually, like you can either separate the art from the artist or you can stop listening to them. Um, but like nobody is sitting there saying, no, 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 they're a good person. Like, I don't understand why with comedians specifically yeah. that it like, it really gets into that. You know, I have an entire, yeah. uh, tattoo sleeve on my left yeah. arm. Uh, these are all tattoos of this band named brand new, uh, yeah. who turned out the singer was a pedophile. So. Oh, <laughs> oh, 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 oh yeah. you're canceled again. That's a twofer. Yeah. We got him twice. Well, <laughs> luckily now we know that, uh, if you're canceled, you can, you can get, uh, you can get a Netflix special. Isn't that nice? Mm-hmm. That's, this is what it means to be canceled. This guy was canceled. They said, and he's doing fine, right? Mm-hmm. Maybe I should be canceled. Yeah, I mean, at the very least, you can if you get canceled, maybe you can like hook me up with with one of those um, single family homes in your development. You got it. Yeah, you got it. It's all connected. <laughs> Fucking teamwork, right there, huh? Mm-hmm. I like how you brought that back around. All right. Well, I I'm tell a you, professional comedian. You're good. At, you're good at this. <laughs> um, 
I well, made twenty dollars doing comedy this year. Twenty so bucks. Far, so fuck yeah, yeah, dude. Let's fucking go. <laughs> Let's fucking go. Um. Uh. Yeah, I I I do notice that. Yeah, definitely. I think musicians too, co comedians definitely. Uh, uh, they just worship them, and they just I don't know what it is. People just haven't gotten in their minds that you can't have any gods or masters, and definitely no podcasters. We've talked about this, but um, you know, no one's perfect. Nobody's perfect, and like you mm -hmm. just can't hold. You just can't put everyone up on any fucking pedestal that assumes that they are. With that said, Mr. Rogers has not yet failed me. Who else has not yet failed me? I'm thinking, um, not, who hasn't, who hasn't let me down? Um, I'm, I'm, I feel like I'm waiting to hear a weird ass story about Mr. Rogers, right? Like something, yeah. so, I'm going to hear about know. him like, he ooh, seemed, Mr. Rogers. He seemed like a good guy. He's, yeah. That, Mr. Rogers from Pittsburgh. So did pretty good. Hometown hero. Mother Teresa? No. Get out of here. She wasn't even a real mother. Uh, <laughs> was Teresa her real name? No, she like kept people in poverty. She got off on it. Honestly, go go look into it. Carl Sagan may chance. Yeah, maybe maybe Carl Sagan. Yeah. I feel like uh, Steve Irwin. It's almost That's like a good one. Not even beneficial to try and find who's a good and versus a bad person because like I got I'm gonna say almost statistically 100% of people are some fucking mix in between and it's like almost not useful to try and categorize people as either good or bad like you're just, sure. there's not enough people that if you know enough about them everybody's done some grimy shit you know I, I refuse to believe that Mr. Rogers didn't ever break somebody's heart on purpose because he was trying to get like just like some weird shit like we all do are you accusing are you accusing Mr. Rogers of like Mr. Breaking Rogers hearts? cheated on my grandma. Yes, okay. I'm finally <laughs> No, I don't know. Your I just, grandma I got cucked. Yeah, I don't I don't think it's beneficial to try and determine whether a person is good or bad sure. like in that kind of binary thinking cuz like there's it's just not a useful enough metric to like really apply to yeah. to people. And it it makes it too easy to write off people that are like, "Oh, well they're a bad person." And so you just dehumanize them. I don't know. <laughs> it's it's Maybe maybe I'm just either uh, the s stupidest person or oh. the smartest person. It's yeah. just I don't like to put that kind of like input into my brain. Okay, so what do you think about Dave Chappelle? Good or bad? Just kidding. I think he's a. I think he's rich, and uh, I think that again, like I kind of understand <laughs> why he's doing what he's doing is because like he, <laughs> in the in the way that he can feel persecuted, the only like persecution that a very rich powerful wealthy person can feel is people talking about them so like it triggers that same feeling that i felt when people were saying that i was doing buffalo genocide denial that You're like oh no i'm being attacked it's just that like he doesn't have the humility to say like oh maybe i did maybe i deserve this attack um but like i you know i'm not a fan i don't like what he's no. doing i don't like but I wouldn't say like he's evil. Like I wouldn't just like I don't know. Again, it's like I just don't think of stuff in that like kind of sure. good or bad, evil or pure. Like it just it doesn't. It's not that helpful, you know. Yeah. Um, I got you for a couple more minutes here, and I I uh, I wanted to ask about this because I've I've had this in mind. I don't know if we talked about this before. Um, but one one thing I have in mind is like how. Like comedy ages, and 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 sometimes it ages better than others, right? Sometimes it's mm -hmm. like it's just it's bad. Like you look back on it, and you're like, whoa, that was not that only that not only not didn't age well, it's not funny. It's actually bad. <laughs> yeah. Um. Can you think of like good examples of uh, of like comedian stand up comedian that age well? I'm 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 not I'm not looking for perfection again. Not looking for the good bad distinction, but like I'm thinking of George, George Carlin. I really like George Carlin. Mm -hmm. uh, despite him sometimes saying some stuff that I'm like, ooh, you wouldn't be able to get away with say, uh, phrasing it that way today. What do you think? Um, see, it's hard because like a lot of comedy that like rises to the top is like doing some kind of social commentary on where mm. things are at that time. Yeah, like when people like George Carlin, when people like uh. Like even like early Dave Chappelle, like when they were doing what originally put them on the map, like 
that was transgressive for the moment. But looking back, like that conversation has been had a lot. So it's not as uh, impactful. So like comedy that stands yeah. the test of time. W- like to me, it's like, I don't know. Th- I would rather watch the three stooges than any comedy yeah. from the nineties. Like, like let's fucking go. Stuff. Right. That's that, like, that still holds that holds up. Yeah. Yeah. It's hilarious. Um, I think they did. And like, like I said, yeah. like, it's not that there's anything wrong with it. It's just that like, I think the comedy that has the biggest impact in the moment is stuff that is about the moment. Yeah. So after the moment passes, it's like, I mean, I get what you were doing, but like, yeah, I don't know. It just doesn't feel the same. Um, Unless you want to do like, I don't know, people that are like more just like silly joke writing clowns almost yeah. like maybe that stuff. But again, I'm not very well versed in comedy, so I don't know names okay. of people that would do that. We, um, I tell you what, we just like last week, uh, just randomly did like a, an 80s comedy deep dive. Oh, so, okay. Maybe a shallow dive. I don't know. We just watched 80s comedy. <laughs> uh, Bill Maher. Oh, he was so bad, dude. Really bad. Jerry well, that Seinfeld. Would make sense because he's st- 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 uh, currently pretty bad at jokes. Still bad. <laughs> yeah, um, still bad, right? Uh, 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 we saw Jerry Seinfeld. Not good. Really not good. Uh, fucking Larry David probably writes jokes around that guy. You could totally. I, I, so it sort of made sense. They're like, all right, let's grab this guy. He's not funny. We'll we'll be able to make him funny. He's now he's the richest guy in entertainment. Is that right? Did I f- make that up? I don't know. I know um, he's super, super fucking rich. But yeah. Um, yeah. I feel like I feel like with Jerry Seinfeld, like he was doing a lot of like observational humor. Okay. And the thing is, is that like at that time he was kind of like branching out in a new direction that like there wasn't a lot of observational humor. But like that whole shtick has been done so much since he Not he was one of the first Satan. people doing Not it today. that now it's like this is corny. Like, yeah. You're just talking about why is this thing like this? It's so bad. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, you know who held up really well as well? Robin Williams. In okay, yeah. Incredible, and he was actually like, like I was saying, like goofy, like a clown. Like I don't so know much energy. Holy I, I, it's fucking been a shit! Long time no since one I've comes, watched Robin yeah. Williams. It's like 10, 15 years since I've seen like some of his stand up. But like, I think that that's kind of what I was talking about. Where like, it wasn't necessarily that his jokes were that great. It's that he was doing like. A clown thing like he was just bringing a lot to the stage and like yeah. all over the place um maybe i could be like robin williams someday and by that i mean dead this yeah, has been really fun dan it um, has <laughs> been fun I, I i also think it had something to do with the cocaine but yes this has been a lot mm. of fun and i do have a hard uh, stop right here i'm gonna invite another friend on uh mm. andrew you have, wait you have other I, you have, you have other friends? I'm trying to make friends. Me? I'm trying to get Chat, will you all uh, let, let the other friend know that I was here first? <laughs> That's, yeah, this, <laughs> this, my, new, my new friend's getting sloppy seconds here. Um, all right, Andrew, big shout out to you. Oh, thank you for the 1312 bo- uh, biddies, Boof. That that means a lot. That's like, that, they just they just sent me like a whole bunch of pennies. Uh, each biddy is Sweet. like a penny. So like thirteen twelve okay. is actually a lot of uh, a lot of pennies. Thank you very much, Boof. That that means a lot. Chat, you just got boofed. Uh, anyways, <laughs> um, is Boof is my patron saint and uh, keep honestly probably keeps my lights on. Uh, to be quite yeah. honest. Anyways, big Dan Kavanaugh fan. That's over Wait. my head. Brett Brett Kavanaugh. Brett Kavanaugh. Oh yes, I still love beer. I drink beer. <laughs> I still love beer. <laughs> Imagine um, say, saying that in a job interview and then getting the job, other than it being a bartender or something, right? Yeah. <laughs> what the fuck, man? SCOTUS. Uh, Andrew, let's give you the, uh, the big shout out before you, uh, we let you go. Folks, you can find Andrew on Twitter at Andrew Hillary uh, US. Uh, really uh, good tweeter, as we've discussed before. Andrew's got the, the worst week ever. Uh, yet podcast uh, and it does seem to get worse every week it's wild right uh, yeah no um, do not come to my podcast if you're trying to learn anything but if you want to have a good time <laughs> worst week yet it's available everywhere you get podcasts I'd love to have you listen <laughs> um, and uh, and you're you're you will hopefully be able to see you doing some some more stand-up comedy in this uh, in this new year we're thinking later down the road 
Yeah. Also, uh, just one last thing. Yeah. If any of the chat or any of your listeners somehow live in Alaska, oh. I'm going to Alaska in April for the Before You Die Comedy Festival. Uh, I don't know anybody in Alaska, but I'm doing a live podcast uh, for my show. And I imagine that talking about leftist news uh, is going to not go over well in a dive bar in the middle of the day in Anchorage, wow, Alaska. So yeah. If anybody is in Alaska, come to my show. <laughs> Let's go to Alaska. All right. Yeah. We'll make a road trip and we're all, we're all going to come see you. Uh, Fuck uh, yeah, dude. Uh, do the show. Incredible. Incredible. Okay. Well, Andrew, I want to thank you again for joining me today. Thanks for hanging out. I really, really uh, like this. I, I think I would invite the opportunity to do this again soon. So... Uh, please keep this in mind if you ever want to jump in. If, if there's any, ever anything you want to workshop, if you just need like a place to, uh, 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 you know, do a little back and forth with someone outside your podcast, uh, the door is open for you. I really like you a lot, and, I, and I'm, a, I'm a big fan. I'm 100% I'm, I'm team uh, the, the, the fucking tank. Uh, Hank the tank. Hank the tank, and also 100% <laughs> oh, I'm yeah. on team Andrew Hillary. Let's fucking go, Andrew Hillary. Love your face. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we'll, uh, we'll talk to you again soon, okay, buddy? Have a good one, okay? All right. Thanks so See much. Ya. All right. That was Andrew Hillary. Wait. It's okay. It's not broken, actually. That's not... That was Andrew Hillary.